What's up, Internet? Welcome back. This is Linzer22. The controller is the centerpiece of the video game console, yet sometimes I feel like it gets neglected. I'd like to take some time to discuss the different types of controllers and why all input methods are important. But before I get into it, let me just remind you guys that this is a forum discussion video. So if you have a favorite controller and you would like to discuss it, leave it down below for discussion and subscribe for more content. Now close your eyes. I know you're probably not actually closing your eyes, but let's just do this for dramatic effect. Once again, close your eyes. Imagine you're playing your most nostalgic game. Think about how your hands feel. Chances are, depending on your age, that controller could vary. And the controller makes up a large percentage of the experience. At one point, I used to think the Xbox 360 was the best controller because XYZ, it was the one that every console should just have. But over time, I've come to learn that all controllers carry a different and unique experience and they shouldn't be ignored. And if you love video games at all, if you consider yourself a gamer, you've got to try them all or at least most of them. Most of what many would could consider important. Now, normally on YouTube, I find that many gamers try to pinpoint what is the best controller, but I think all controllers have a unique aspect to them. In fact, maybe the input method is more of an art than a science. Like, let's think about it. Let's think about how these different inputs vary. By using a joystick movement, it's more varied, but a D-pad is more precise. Having more buttons can give you more input options. While less buttons will narrow the amount of options you have, just to simplify the game feel. Sometimes you gotta ask yourself, is this a keyboard and mouse kind of game? Or maybe it's a simple one stick button game. Do I need to feel like I'm at an actual arcade with six buttons? Or is this jinky retro gamepad the real deal? In my opinion, the goal of the controller is not to ease the experience, but it is to add to the actual experience. If you observe professional gamers, you'll see a variety of unique controllers, but that is a single subject case. It's just one example of many examples of why you should be looking at different controllers. In that case, they are all trying to find the best controller to give them the upper hand. And of course, it may differ from player to player. But what about a steering wheel offering a simulator feel even if it does up the, the difficulty? Or a controller that acts as an obstacle itself for an inherently boring game, but that obstacle makes it fun. Let's take a look at an old console, a very, very old console that actually comes before the Atari 2600. It's called the Fairchild Channel F console. It had a unique controller. I don't actually own this controller, so I'm showing you a clip off YouTube. And I gotta say, it's not the most effective controller, but it is so different. It is experienced that uh, must be experienced. I mean, just look at it. It's like a wand with a little nub on the top. And if you kind of think about it, that's like the base of the controller, but not really. And you move around the controller itself as you would a joystick but then you got a few other options. Instead of a button, you can either elevate that nub or push that nub down. Then you have the option of turning it 45 degrees in one direction and in the other direction. And this is a unique experience. And if you're playing ROMs or on an emulator on your computer using a traditional controller, you're not necessarily experiencing it wrong, but you're missing out on the experience. But like I said, emulating that on a keyboard itself is truth be told, an experience on its own. So it shouldn't be ignored. Motion controls, while it can be argued that in some games like Splatoon is actually better, but for the most part, motion controls in games make it harder. It also creates a new experience. I mean, think about it. Wii Tennis was actually fun because you were hitting a tennis ball. Even though it wasn't as accurate as we all initially thought it was, that was definitely a hit. And I don't think that as well should not be emulated by a keyboard or keystrokes or button presses. It's not the same experience. Now, before I end this video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out of a couple of controller aspects that I want to dub my favorites. The first one I'll mention is the GameCube. And the aspect of the GameCube that I really enjoy is the octagon gate for the joystick. Not exactly sure if it's called an octagon gate, but I do know that there is an octagon gate that you can put for your joystick on an arcade board. So I'm going to call it the same thing. The reason why I like this so much um, is because you can actually ride the joystick through the diagonal direction. If it doesn't make sense, I will put a video on here to show what I mean. Meaning like you can push, you can push down and then instead of 
just going straight to diagonal and straight to, um, I don't know, the right side or something, you can kind of just ride it. You can feel those octagon pinpoints in each direction. It's, it adds a feel that I really enjoy. Although some games that don't register directional points, it probably wouldn't work well. And that's another case of not every controller is perfect for every game. Another one is for the Xbox 360, although there's a lot of controllers that actually do this fairly well. But I'm gonna use the 360 as, a, as a, um, an example because that's a controller that I, I feel like was one of the first ones that used this example. And that is the shoulder buttons. That's the bumpers on the top and the triggers, pretty much a combination of the two. Now I know that PlayStation had two shoulder buttons from the very beginning, but I feel like the difference between what PlayStation 1 did and what Xbox 360 did is the Xbox 360 differentiated the the buttons. It made the two bottom ones triggers and the two top ones bumpers and the triggers below the bumpers were actually analogs. So you had a reason to put different actions to each button. And it made sense, it, it actually felt good. It felt good when you're driving because you can accelerate and decelerate, if you know what I mean. The last thing I'm gonna mention is the touchscreen. The touchscreen is so intuitive, it surprises me that it took Nintendo to finally make it a usable playstyle in the Nintendo DS. It makes navigating menus, organizing assets, and using a creation tool much easier to enjoy. Instead of using your joystick to go to a particular item and hitting accept or something like that, you can literally use a pen, touch that item, and you're there. It just made things seamless. For the good and the bad, I mean, there's a lot of bad touchscreen games out there, but for the most part, I feel like it brings more good than bad. Well, anyways, that was my discussion on controllers. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. If you guys are into pro gaming and you want to customize your best controller for competitions, let me know what your preferred play style is. If you totally agree and you like the idea of preserving classic video games, and its controllers because you agree that it's a big portion of gaming itself. I'd like to hear what you have to say too. Like I said, leave your opinions down below. And if you like discussions much like this one, subscribe for more content and I'll be back with more.